My name is Michael Crane. I'm Managing Director of Crownfield Colours, a producer of artist paints in the UK, and I'm delighted to be joined by Georgina Potter. George is, I think, how you wish to be known. Uh, George is an eminent artist based here in the UK and exhibits her work and, and teaches and uh, is very much part of the art fraternity here. And she's also the proud owner of one of the finest painty handbags I've ever <laughs> seen. So thank you for joining us. Thank you too for bringing your paint. And this will seem hilarious to some of the people that uh, watch this brief video, that here I am as a paint maker, encouraging people not to take all the colours in all the sizes. It would be good for trade, but it's clearly not what you do. So I wonder my first question to you would be, what's your essential group of colours? What do you buy? What would you say you must have <clears throat> before well, you go out? These are 100% the ones that I, I, need to, I, I like to have throughout my whole palette. However, if I was just to go out painting and I could only take a few, I could probably narrow this down even more. But it's surely hot. Okay. <laughs> so they're all delicious. We'll let you have these. We'll let you have these. Okay. And then what do you do? How do I notice that you've uh, put them in a, a, a color order. Describe to me the uh, colors that you've already mixed there. So you've taken, are, are all these here in their own right? These or, are all, or what's going on? All around the edges, the pure colors. And I put these in the same place every single time because when I'm painting, from the landscape, because I want it to stay as instinctive as possible. It has to be very instinctive where I put my where I put my paint brush down on my palette, so I know exactly where the colours are, so I can keep looking and mix really quickly and get my eye back up again. Right. So that's why they're all in the right order. The ones in the middle are actually only um, the byproduct of what I've mixed, all mixed together. At the end of the paint, I save that paint. At the end of me painting, yeah. I save that paint and mix into into a nice grey. So these are just mixes of everything else, which I then will use again as a base colour grey for another painting. Wonderful recycling, which is only possible yeah, really point. with oil based. Yeah, so only yeah, with oils. great. Only with so I wonder then, um, with that as a foundation, tell me about cool colours and warm colours. You clearly haven't classified them as such around there. No, so I so haven't. how do you view that, and how do you? Uh, you um, in fact, most of my colours here are quite warm. Are quite warm. I don't have many cool colours, but obviously I do use the occasional one. I mean, there are different different um, reds I've got. So I've got a warm and a, a cool red there. So cadmium red genuine is my is my warm and then my magenta. I can never actually say that word. Quinacridone. Yep. Yes, Quinacridone, okay. that's yeah, how you say it. Yeah, it I, is, just, is. I just say quin magenta. Well, to be honest, a lot of these terms do have different pronunciations yeah. in different places. I so, never so have don't any worry. idea. So that's my cool and my warm reds. I've got my cool and my warm blues as well. That's a very, very cool. Um, the cerulean's a very cool blue. Mm -hmm. And then I've got my, um, my warmer blue, which is my ultramarine blue red shade. And then my cooler one's my cerulean blue. Um, and um, and then obviously I've got the differences in between my cool yellow, which is my cadmium yellow, and then my warm yellow, my cadmium yellow, deep genuine. Um, and uh, I mean, yeah, these are all my lovely. I've got lots because I do lots of landscapes. I've got lots and lots of very earthy brands which I use a lot. I can't really avoid those. Um, but um, I actually don't think I could do without any of those now with, within my palette. So you you've described them as either being warm or uh, cool colours. How have you come to that conclusion? Have you is that knowledge you've read up, or have you discovered it yourself by mucking about with them and uh, um, reducing them? And, and uh, I've discovered? read a bit about it. A lot of it's been about how when I do a painting with certain colours, the painting will feel cooler. <laughs> if I'm going to be doing um, a frosty painting, for example. Um, all my frosts will, I'll be using lots of my turquoise, my cerulean blue. Um, I mean, the blues isn't obvious for a cool, but it, it is, it is cooler. I won't use the ultramarine blue so much. Um, uh, it's just, it's just been trial and error. So, so those, those cooler colors that make it, make the painting feel much colder. And then for sunsets and, and, you know, that kind of thing, I'm looking at all the warmer, all the warmer reds and all the warmer oranges and, um, I, for the blues also, for sunsets and things, I'll always use King's Blue Deep, which is very purpley. It's very warm. And warm for blue. you, um, your choice is uh, uh, something that you've built up over a period. Do you tend to purchase genuine colours or do you, uh, um, are you happy with hues or, how, or have you not really got an opinion on that either way? I do have an opinion. I do prefer my genuine colours. Yep. Um, I do a lot of mixing and I like to mix my own colours when I'm painting. Um, and because of that, 
I'm probably mixing hues anyway. So if I start off with a hue, I'm going to end up with a lot less pigment per the, 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 whatever I'm mixing is going to be a lot less strong than I would like. Okay. So um, that's why I tend to use um, the pure colors. Um, hues do have a place though. Um, if I'm going to be doing a really big painting and I've got a big area to cover, yes. I often use hues for that because it, it is slightly less expensive and the way in which I paint is such that the really, really strong colours are the focal point. Um, the pure, more pure colours are the focal point. And then to bring your eye into that focal point, you have slightly less. If you had yeah. pure and strong and wow yeah. everywhere, you wouldn't know where to look on the painting first. You've got to have a place that you can want your eye rest. And then you've got to be able to follow around and look around the painting and then go back to that place again. And but if it's all situation. the same punch, yeah. then you're going to lose yeah. that, that. So then point. the, the muted, uh, the, the less intense uh, color that's achieved from a hue works. Exactly. Yeah. That yeah. works for that. And especially on bigger paintings, it, it definitely works yeah. much better okay. for me. But when I'm out and about, because I mix quite a lot and, yeah. Um, I'm constantly playing with the colours and changing the colours. Actually, it's better for me to use mm. pure. And, and this particular palette is a work of art in itself. Um, <laughs> so this is something that take, you take out on uh, when you're going uh, um, to paint yep. in the countryside. You bring mm -hmm. it back. Uh, you were telling me that you have a unique way of uh, keeping this uh, paint fresh. Yes, for use on I do. Day. I have a lovely lid which goes onto my palette here. And um, I put the whole lot in the fridge or the freezer, even better. You can go in the freezer. So um, my children have to be very careful. Yeah. They don't pick up the wrong thing yeah. for their chips in the but evening. No, this is all music to my ears because um, as a lover of oil paints, we do make acrylic paints too. But of course, you should never let a, an acrylic paint get cold. But the wonder of oils, it'll recover yep. and carry on. Um, so we've talked around the edge. Just uh, you mentioned this, uh, these greys in the middle here. Mm. It's far more than recycling, isn't it? How do you use them? Um, they just... They, they use it, they're sort of a very, very basic grey and every single landscape you look at has got those greys within it. Mm. Um, this one here is much bluer, that one there's a sort of a bit of a darker browner mm. grey mm. and that one there's turned into a greener one and it's mm. just whatever I've been painting in that given moment that day, mm. that leftover paint, I use my palette knife, I mix it all together and then I scoop up that colour and put it on here because I know that I will use these again for another painting for my base greys yeah. and these those they are obviously they're not pure color they're very much well i don't know whether you call them hues but they're they're not a pure color they're a mix so yeah. if you op if you obviously if if you um were to mix two opposites on the spectrum you're going to end up with a gray so if you mix your red and your green you're going to get a, a more gray color and variations of gray across the scale and that so it's not as pure but it's essential for my painting yep. because those colours are what draw you then to the stronger pigments right. in other places right. on the canvas. And it's interesting to see too that each of the other tubes are uh, relatively small apart from a, a great big whopper here of titanium white. I use a lot of white. Yeah. Use a lot of is, white. Yeah. Yeah. And, and mediums do you use? Yes, I do. I use, um, this is my little medium for carrying out and about because mm. I don't want to have the weight. Yeah. Don't have too much stuff. And actually, often mm. when I'm out painting, I now don't take all the paints with me. I will mm. literally take, these days I'm taking that with me, that with me, um, and that one there with me, and my white. And actually, the rest I squeeze out onto my palette, and I go with lo a loaded palette, mm. and it keeps my weight down. Um, and you always take some Potter's Perfect Painter's, whatever it is, primer or product with you. Uh, <laughs> and so what's actually in here? So this is um, linseed oil mixed with low odour thinner, yep. both Cranfield, yeah. and it's 50-50, okay. a 50-50 mix. Yep. And it just, the linseed oil is, is too thick and, and it's just too, um, too bothered, shiny really. yeah. okay. for me. Um, yeah. And the thinner just helps it to flow a little bit easier. It also helps with drying time because yeah. the thin linseed oil will be if I use pure, lins pure linseed oil, it does take a lot longer for them to dry. Yeah. Whereas with the thinner, it just it, it speeds up the yeah. process a little yeah. bit more. And for those that are perhaps watching this who haven't yet tried oils, I know you're very passionate about their wonderful flexibility. The fact that the what used to be seen as a, um, a disadvantage of the slow drying is actually you know such a gift mm. to you as a painter. Um, but eventually it will dry. So uh, how regularly are you scraping them? Um, every couple of weeks. I mean, at the moment, these are all looking okay, but as it starts to get messy and the yeah. colours start blending into each other a little yeah. bit too much, then I will get my palette knife and I'll scrape it all down um, and I start all over again. 
<laughs> but I do tend to, there's always paint within. So it'll, a little crust of, you know, film will go over the top of it. Yeah. But underneath that, if you, I just sort of squeeze it and then scream out and get, get rid of Lovely. the other bits and save it. So. Lovely. There's actually not much waste at yeah. all. Brilliant. Well, I, I, it's lovely to watch. As I say, that alone is, is a picture. Thank you ever so much for describing your perfect palette. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.